Okay, we are going through the rest of Act 2. Now, most of you, we left off um, in Act 2 scene, let's see, what scene were we in? Scene 4. So we got through where, <clears throat> you know, Romeo comes in and joins Mercutio and Benvolio, and they are, um, they're just having fun and laughing in the streets. And remember, Tybalt sent that letter to Romeo challenging him to a duel. So Romeo uh, doesn't know about this yet, right? Because they've just been joking around and, and they, have, they haven't told Romeo. So he's kind of in the blind and they're just having fun. And they're like, oh yay, we got our friend back. Romeo's acting like his normal self. So that's kind of where we left off, okay? We left off on the top of page 48. I told you guys to start reading line 81. So if you haven't done that yet, pause this video read lines 81 through 92 before the nurse and the Peter enter. Okay, so if you haven't done that, pause it, read it. And we're gonna just talk about it really quick. Not a whole lot happens. Um, Mercutio, his first line, he's say, telling this to Romeo. He says, why is not this better now than groaning for love? Okay, he's, he's saying, well, Romeo's, you know, joking around, acting like his normal self, and he's like, hey, isn't this more fun than you, like, whining and being sad about your your lost love now art thou sociable now art thou romeo is what he says so he's like yeah i'm glad you're back to your normal self and then you know mercutio is about ready to start getting into another one of his rambling stories and benvolio stops him that's where he says on line 86 stop there stop there he's like don't start with another one of your crazy rambling stories and mercutio's like what i wasn't gonna do anything what are you talking about all right, and then they see the nurse and Peter um, entering, and Romeo says, uh, here's goodly gear. So they're like, oh, what's happening? Now, I love this part, okay? Uh, I will say Mercutio is super duper mean to the nurse in this section, okay? Now, it's because the nurse is such an idiot, really, is all that it is. So the nurse is going to make what are called malapropisms here. And um, a malapropism, you guys should have talked about it or learned about it on your strategies for understanding Shakespeare worksheet. But a malapropism is when you use a word incorrectly. Okay, so she uses a lot of words incorrectly. Like she'll say a word thinking that it's a different word because she's just so uneducated. She doesn't know that she's making a mistake, but these guys are going to kind of poke fun at her. So we have a couple malapropisms that occur here in the rest of the scene, a couple of them by the nurse and one of them actually by Benvolio. I know, the nice guy, right? Who's making fun of the nurse. Um, and Mercutio, as soon as the nurse comes in here, he's going to start making fun of her. All right. And he makes fun of her with the use of what's called a double entendre. Okay, and a double entendre is kind of like a pun, but it's a little bit more sexual. Okay, so that's what a double entendre is. So he's going to do, make a lot of double entendres here, poking fun at the nurse because she looks stupid. Remember, we talked about how she's got like only four teeth um, and she's probably, you know, a larger lady. She's just, she's just weird. Uh, so if you would go ahead and pause this video and I want you to read from when the nurse and Peter enter all the way to page 49, line 132, 33, where Mercutio and Bonvolio exit. So pause the video now, read that section, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so the nurse walks in, and the first thing Mercutio says is, a sale, a sale. Where would you find a sale? On a ship right? Mercutio here is literally calling the nurse a ship because she's so wide, okay? So he's poking fun at her here, like she's walking in, and you can just imagine this big, like, woman. She's older, so she's maybe, like, limping. She's not, you know, she's got four teeth, okay? Just get this visual in your head. And Mercutio is making fun of her, and he calls, a sail, a sail, right? He's like, here comes a ship, a ship, a ship. That is the first double entendre that he makes, okay? So he's poking fun at her with that. Um, and then, you know, Benvolio is just, he's playing off of this, you know? He's just feeding into Mercutio's ramblings here, and he's like, two, two, a shirt and a smock. He's like, oh, her man Peter's with her. He's a sail too, right? And uh, they come in, 
And then a, Mercutio makes another another jab at the nurse here on line 98-ish. Mercutio says, good Peter to hide her face, okay, because the nurse asks for a fan. So let's see, let me get a piece of paper here. All right, so here's her fan, right? And Mercutio's like, yes, good Peter, give her her fan so she can hide her face with it because her face is so ugly. Oh, oh Mercutio, you're so bad. Okay, he's like, the fan is literally prettier than her face, so give her a fan so she, so she can hide her ugly face. Well, the nurse is like, who is this guy and who does he think he is, right? Because she she's not dumb enough where she doesn't know that she's being made fun of. So she's like, oh, this guy is so rude. Um, so she tries to be nice. She's like, good morrow, good morrow. Um, Mercutio continues to pick on her. Line 105, she starts to get really mad. She's like, out upon you. What a man are you? Ugh. She's like, you are so rude, right? By my trough, it is well said for him to melt himself, blah, 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 blah. Right? And she's kind of going off. Um, but then she talks to Romeo and she makes a malapropism, making herself look even more foolish. So on four, page 49, line 117, the nurse, the, nurse, the nurse says, if you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. And you can even see in your margin notes, it says the nurse mistakes for conference. Okay, so she means to say conference, like I want to talk with you, but she says confidence. Okay, so she, she has a, a malapropism here. She's using the wrong word because she just thinks it's the right word. She doesn't know any better because she's uneducated. Well, Benvolio's next line, he makes fun of her for it. He says she will indict him to supper. And of course he means invite, but he says indict, okay? Um, so they're just still picking on her. And then Mercutio, I maybe shouldn't tell you this. Don't tell your parents. If you're watching this video in front of them, put it away, okay? Um, we have another double entendre here that Mercutio makes, and it's the worst one yet. He says on line 121, no hair, sir, referring to the nurse, unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie that is something stale and whore ere it be spent. A hair is a prostitute, okay? So Mercutio is literally calling the nurse a prostitute, kind of. He's like saying she's not a prostitute, okay? So no hair because she's so ugly because she's stale and you know she can't she can't uh, hide her ugliness okay so he starts singing a song about how ugly she is and that's what happens on line like 123 through 128 an old hair whore an old hair whore blah blah blah, blah, blah. and he goes off and off and off so at the end of his song once he calms down a little bit he says Romeo will you come to your father's well to dinner for thither. Okay, so um, he says, you know, are you going to come back home for dinner where Mercutio is going to go? And Romeo says, yes, I will follow you. And that's when, you know, Mercutio and Benvolio finally leave and they are going, and it's not actual like dinner, dinner, like supper, like we call it, it would just be lunch. Okay, so that's what they call lunch. Because remember, this is still really early in the morning. So they're like, are you going to come back to eat? And he's like, yeah, I'll see you there. Um, and they leave, finally. And the nurse, Oh, and that's where we stopped. So that's where we stopped. Mercutio and Benvolio enter or exit. So pause the video and read line 133 through um, 172 on page 50. Okay, so stop after the nurse says this afternoon, sir. We shall be there. So read it, read it, read it. Okay, so Mercutio and Benvolio have just left. The nurse is really riled up. She's like, oh, I cannot believe that guy. He was such a jerk to me. I cannot believe you're friends with him. And she's just like going off because Mercutio got her all riled up, right? She reprimands Peter, her servant, for not sticking up for her, okay? And Peter said on line 144, gotta love Peter. He said, I saw no man use you at his pleasure. He's like, I didn't say anything. Nobody was mistreating you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And the nurse is like, on the bottom of page 49, Now, afore God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers, right? Scurvy knave. And she's like, oh, I'm so mad. I could just lose my crap. 
And then, um, then she actually starts talking about what she's really there for. So on line 150, she said to Romeo, um, as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. So we know that Juliet sent the nurse. So now we know that the nurse knows what's going on between these two because the nurse is her messenger. And remember, the nurse and Juliet are super close. The nurse is really nurturing to Juliet. She wants what's best for her. Okay, so um, it's it's not weird that the nurse like is, isn't is running to Lady Capulet and being like, oh, your daughter's trying to elope with this Romeo guy who you guys hate. No, it's she wants what's best for Juliet and she's really excited for Juliet. So she goes to Romeo and she's like, you know, my long, young lady bid me inquire you out. And then because she cares about Juliet so much, on line 152, she says, um, but first let me tell you, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were very gross kind of behavior, as they say, right? So she's trying to sound a little more sophisticated with the as they say, but she's threatening him here. I mean, we do the same thing with our friends, too. You know, if we, we meet their significant other for the first time and we're like, oh, you better treat her well or him well or else I know where you live or whatever. You know, we just, it's like, kind of like a joking threat. It just shows that you care about the person and you don't want anybody to hurt them. So that's exactly what she's doing here. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then. So Romeo's like, okay, well, <laughs> this part's funny. Romeo says, nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. Now, the nurse hears that word protest and again, she mistakes it for the word propose, okay? So she thinks that Romeo here is saying propose, and she's like, oh, good heart, and in faith I will tell her as much, Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. And Romeo's like, what are you gonna tell her? I haven't told you anything yet. And she's like, I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, thinking it's propose. <laughs> and Romeo's like, um, okay, definitely not what you think it is, right? So he's like, oh, okay, this woman's pretty crazy. But then he tells her the plan, all right? And the plan is this on line 166. Bid her devise, come up with, some means to come to shrift, and shrift is confession, shrift this afternoon. When is it happening? This afternoon. And there she shall, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Okay, so he's got the plan, right? Juliet has to go to confession. That's her excuse, right? And then she will have confession, but then she'll also be married to Romeo. And um, the nurse is like, oh, yay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now I want you to pause the video, read the rest of the scene, because Romeo's going to give us one more um, piece of information. He's like, I have one more part to my plan. So I want you to pay attention and see what that part to the plan is. So pause now, read the rest. Okay, so Romeo, the last thing, the first thing that he says here on line like 174, within this hour, my man shall be with thee and bring the cords made like a tackle stair. Okay, it's visual. Cords, meaning like rope, made like a tackled stair. All right, you getting it? It's a rope ladder, right? He's gonna bring her, a, or have his man bring her a rope ladder within the hour. So within an hour, she'll get that. Which, so I'm continuing reading line 176, which to the high top gallant of my joy, Juliet's room, must be my convoy in the secret night. So he wants the nurse to throw down this rope ladder over the balcony so he can climb up and be with Juliet tonight so they can consummate their marriage, right? Um, and the nurse asks on line 182, is your man secret? Like, will he keep it a secret? Will he tell anybody? And Romeo's like, I warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Um, then the nurse kind of tells Romeo about Paris. He tells her about Paris. He says, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife abroad, right? So there's a guy, this Paris, who, who's interested in Juliet. But she, good soul, had as leave see a toad 
a very toad as see him. She's like, Juliet doesn't like him. She thinks he's a toad, so I just want to let you know. And then um, on line 190, 193, she asks this question about Rosemary. She says, doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin with a letter? And Ro Romeo's like, yeah, the letter R. But what I want to focus on is the Rosemary. So she's making this connection um, between Romeo, Juliet, and Rosemary. And what Rosemary is, you guys, um, well, obviously it's an herb. We use it today in cooking. But back in this time period, it was used two ways. The first way it was used was as a token of remembrance between lovers, okay? So that's to what the nurse is referring to here. But it was also used as a, a token of remembrance for the dead. Foreshadowing, right? So we have some foreshadowing with the, the allusion or reference to Rosemary here. Um, and the nurse said on line 196, the reason she asked about Rosemary, she says, Juliet, she hath the prettiest sententious of it of you and Rosemary. So she's like, you know, Juliet has this wonderful saying about you and Rosemary, and I'm not gonna do it justice if I try to tell you what it is. So a little bit of foreshadowing there, everybody leaves. And now we're in scene five, um, and scene five is in Capulet's orchard, and we're gonna see Juliet. Now, Juliet has just been wandering around waiting for the nurse to return. I mean, she is waiting to find out if the man that she's completely and madly in love with wants to marry her. Oh, I would be on the edge of my seat too, right? So she's just waiting and she's waiting and she's waiting, and she has this super long soliloquy. Um, and she, in her soliloquy, she's gonna tell us how she's feeling, and she's also gonna tell us how long she's been waiting. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video, read through um, her soliloquy. So right after the nurse enters, I want you guys to pause, okay? Just see if you can figure out how long Juliet has been waiting. To figure it out, it's three hours. It says on line 10, of this day's journey and from nine till 12 is three hours long. So the nurse has been gone for three hours. So can you imagine waiting for like the biggest news of your life for three hours? It would probably feel like forever, right? But then the nurse and Peter come in and Juliet's all excited. She's like, oh God. And this is on the top of page 52. Oh God, she comes. Oh honey nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. And then Peter leaves. And now in the rest of the scene, Juliet is trying to get the nurse to tell her what the news is. She's like, so what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? The nurse is messing with her hardcore. So I want you guys to see what the nurse says as she's kind of like messing around with Juliet. And then finally, what does she say um, is the plan to Juliet? So pause video now and read the rest of this scene. Okay. So the nurse comes in and Juliet's like on line 21, good sweet nurse, oh Lord, why lookest thou sad? So the nurse comes in and she's like, all oh, sad right? And Juliet's worried. She's like, why do you look so sad? Thou news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news. She's like, if the news is sad, tell it to me in a happy voice. But if it is happy, then you're doing it injustice by looking so sad. Like, what are you doing? You're messing with me. She's like, ah, da, da, da. right? So Juliet's like, ah, and the nurse, <laughs> I love the nurse, you guys. She's my favorite. She's like, on line, one, uh, on line 26, I am a weary, give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. Um, so, <laughs> so she's complaining. She's like, I'm so tired, my bones hurt. Like, just let me rest a minute. And Juliet's like, oh, I would have, I had no bones. She's like, I wish I could take your bones. Good news, good, good, good nurse, speak. She's like, please just tell me what the news is. The nurse just, keeps rolling with this, oh, I'm so tired, oh, I'm so tired thing. So line 131, she's like, do you not see that I'm out of breath, <laughs> right? And um, so she's like, my bones ache, I'm out of breath. 
And then on, and she just keeps dragging this out and dragging this out. Line 149, she's like, Lord, how my head aches, right? So the nurse is like, oh, I've got all these things wrong with me. And the meanwhile, Juliet's like, ah, I love you, but I want to murder you right now. Just tell me what the news is, right? But the nurse is just totally teasing her in this scene. Finally, the nurse asks her on line, on line 68, have you got leave to go to Shrift? today. Okay, and that's confession. And got leave means have you gotten permission? So she would have had to get permission from her parents because remember, women were basically prisoners back in this time period. They couldn't go anywhere or do anything without their parents' permission or without a, a, an escort of some sort. So the nurse asks, did you get your parents' permission to go to confession today? Juliet responds, I have. The nurse says, then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. Go to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. All right, so then they get all excited and they're like, ah, oh, yay, we're finally gonna get married. So I just wanna point out that like for a page and a half, the nurse is totally messing with Juliet, not telling her the news, but then she finally does tell it. And she says, you need to go right now. So they're gonna get her cleaned up and then Juliet is going to go straight to Friar Lawrence's cell. And then we're in scene four and we're in Friar Lawrence's cell. So, um. I want to I want to just point this out to you guys before you read it. So in this scene, Friar Lawrence is really hesitant to marry Romeo and Juliet. Okay, he's really nervous that something bad is going to happen. Foreshadowing, right? So I want you to kind of pay attention to what he says, why he's nervous. Um, I'm just going to have you read this whole scene because it's super duper short. And there's a really famous quote on the top of page 54. And I'm gonna see if any of you know what it what it's talking about, okay? And there's a really funny end to this scene, okay? Friar Lawrence kind of says something that I find a little bit humorous, so I want you to see if you can figure out what it is that he says. It is about Romeo and Juliet. So, pause the video, read scene, did I call it scene four? Definitely not scene four, it's scene six, okay? So pause the video and read scene six in Friar Lawrence's cell. Okay. So the first thing that Friar Lawrence says, he says, so smile the heavens upon this holy act. So I hope the heavens smile upon this marriage I'm about to do. That after hours, that when it's done, with sorrow chide us not. So he's like, I really hope that the gods grace us in this, in this marriage and that we don't get in trouble for it later. So he's a little bit nervous, and Romeo, of course, is all optimistic. He's like, amen, amen, but come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. He's like, I don't care what sorrow I feel because one minute with her is worth, you know, I have more joy than all the sorrow in the world. Like, he doesn't care, right? Top of page 54, Friar Lawrence says these words, these violent delights have violent ends. And if any of you have watched the TV show Westworld on HBO, that's like their motto. They say it all the time, okay? Uh, so I just wanna, I wanna point that out because also if you haven't watched Westworld, it's awesome. It's so cool. It's about like robots and they like made these robots, they manufactured them so that people could like go to this park where there's all these robots and they could do whatever they want with them. Okay, I'm getting off track. Anyways, really good show. Um, so these violent delights have violent ends is used all of the time in that show. It's kind of like their, their, their motto that these robots that these robots say over and over and over. It's like in every episode. And I wanna point that out because we've talked about how Shakespeare is timeless and Shakespeare is used all of the time in our culture okay so it's really it's really interesting to to see it here and to to hear shakespeare in a show because once you become familiar with shakespeare you're going to start hearing his lines everywhere and you're going to start you know seeing all these reference references to shakespeare in pop culture because we reference him all the time and you may have heard it a lot and just not known so i just wanted to point that out because i think it's cool um but that line means you've got to be careful because these violent delights and violent meaning like really passionate. So all of your, your fiery passion can have a violent end. Foreshadowing, right? And therefore he gives advice. He says on line 14, therefore love moderately 
He's like, slow down, right? Take your time with love. Um, and then Juliet comes in, and Juliet and Romeo are like, right? They're all lovey-dovey, and they're super excited, and they're just like telling each other how much they love them, love each other. And then the friar, love the friar, right? His last line, line 35, come, come with me, and we will make short work. He's like, come on, let's get you guys married quickly. For by your leaves, you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two into one. He's like, I do not trust you two to be alone until you're married. Yeah. Okay. And that's act two. I'm sorry, this video was really long, but we kind of had a lot more to get through. So hopefully you watched the whole thing because if you did, I have a little surprise for you. I'm either going to post somewhere in this video or in the link down below the study guide answer key to act two. And I will say about the quiz, your act two quiz is going to be harder than your act one quiz, okay? You're gonna have about 10 multiple choice answers on your act two quiz and the rest of it, the rest of the 20 points is going to be short answer. Okay, so 10 points worth of stuff on your quiz is going to be short answer. So you really need to be familiar with the study guide. I want you to make sure that you have the correct answer. So I am going to give you the link to the study guide answer key that I made for you. Again, if you have any questions over the weekend, please make sure that you email me. I will check my email every day except Sunday. So have a happy Thanksgiving.